Hey, Bass Geek here. April's my birthday month and one of my favorite times to fish. And I'm going to share with you my top five baits for April bass. All right, guys, so before we get started here, I do want to take care of just a little bit of business. Guys, make sure you go check out, especially for April, I've got all new updated waypoints. It's the East Tennessee Power Pack on the Fish Life app. I personally update 20 waypoints on my three home lakes, Douglas, South Holston, and Cherokee every single month. It's brand new updated baits you should use in all these locations and updated waypoints that tell you right where to go to catch some bass. All right. So if you've never been on these lakes, I'm showing you where you can go to catch fish. So let's talk about April when it comes to fishing. April in my area is a fast moving month. Things happen in April, right? March, we've had a little bit of a cold front. Things have kind of stayed here, stayed there. Oh, we're coming. Oh, no, we're going back. It's cold. It's, you know, that's March for you in my area. But April, things begin to happen. We start talking about everything beginning to want to make sweet, sweet loving. The moon phases are huge. Every single year in April, you really need to pay attention to those moon phases. The earlier it comes, the faster a lot of these bites are going to be over. They are progressively feeding, working their way toward the beds, and then picking an area and trying to guard it. And that area is going to get smaller, smaller, smaller until they finally lay those eggs and come off those beds. That is all going to happen in a hurry in April where I live. So some of the things that I like to start with, you've heard me talk about it 110 times, the A-Rig, Shane's Bates A-Rig and the Yum Flash Mob Junior. Those are my two go-tos. Probably the Flash Mob is the biggest one that I use 90% of the time. I'm not gonna really talk about rod, reel and line setup in these. Uh, I've got very detailed how-tos on every single one of these baits. Make sure you go back through and check them out. The very next one, it's going to be a jerk bait, guys. Still, those cold fronts come in. Those bass are moving up. A jerk bait over top of laydowns or secondary points or whatever. This can be great and pick up some really, really big bites. Again, you're targeting those fish as they're beginning to move toward the beds. And a jerk bait can really catch you some nice fish in April. A couple of go-tos, okay? A couple of go-tos are, of course, my swim baits. An underspin is a big one, and a standard swim bait, like I say, Ramsey swim baits. This is a sexy shad. Early in the spring, I tend to like like a trout color, if there's trout in your lake, especially when I'm fishing for those smallmouth, and then I'll transition over to this sexy shad color. That's two baits that I love to throw without a underspin. I'll throw an underspin earlier in the month, but then the underspin tends to go away a little bit for me because I want this bait on the bottom because I'm looking for those bass that are beginning to find their area. So as we're going through and there's chasing shad and they're feeding up, I, I throw an underspin a whole lot or a bigger five inch, generally on a half ounce head. That's a ledge head, lures head, by far the best head. I know it doesn't look like much, but I'm telling you guys, if you go by looks when it comes to, to heads, trust me, you're getting burnt. This is also a ledge head lures. This is called the Tennessee River Bling. I love it because I can also put a stinger hook right here. It's great. All that being said, this is a bait that when I first start fishing, in the early April, this is what I'm going to when they're really feeding up, really hitting those shad. But then once we get to the point to where they're in their area, they're starting to claim territory, it really becomes a great search bait to be able to throw up there, reel it down, and you'll feel them hit it. Sometimes they'll eat it, 
Sometimes they're just running it out of their area where they're gonna to wanna to bed. Shallow to mid depth diving cranks this time of year. So they're gonna be moving from steeper banks to shallow flats. Flat areas where they're gonna push shad up and feed, flat areas where they're gonna decide if they're gonna spawn. This is the new Norman Speed N Junior. And I like it in a couple of different colors. Early, I'm gonna go with that chili bowl. A little bit later, I like that diamond crawl pattern, which is really to me kind of like a spring crawl pattern, got a little more orange to it, not as much red. But then when they're up there pushing those shad, I'm definitely going to the lavender shad, a great color, especially for smallies and largies alike. But this runs about four to eight feet. If you put it on like on 12 pound test line, you make a really long cast, you're gonna get it to about five or six is what I've found. I like to throw it on a little bit lighter, that 10 pound test, which is what I've got. And always K9, K9 Pro 100 fluorocarbon. But that is something that I like. And it's great for when you're fishing these open areas too, as a search bait, just the way I was talking about using the individual swim bait. So you're taking this, you're going down the lake, fishing that five, that zero to eight foot section, and they will come up. Now, the good thing about these is when they come up and hit them, they get got. They get got because of the treble hooks. So they don't just hit it and run it out. Even though I'll tell you guys, I have had them come up and hit straight down on those baits, just kind of boom, pin them to the ground just to run them out. So a lot of times <laughs> when they're just guarding territory, that's when you've got to come back with these baits. These baits really tick them off. It's going to be a very small worm, actually a smaller worm than this, but it's going to be a Texas rig. And this is on one of my favorite little combos, which is my lose. This is a great reel. This is their most expensive reel. I think like 130 bucks as far as a spinning reel goes. This is the Custom Pro. Great reel. But I'm going to throw in a Texas rig and I'm going to throw it on six to eight pound test line. Of course, this is an angler tungsten weight. I like that small weight, offset worm shank. Again, throwing it real small. Once I've found that area, a lot of times I'll go right back with something like that or something like this, which is my Ned rig rod. So this is again, another suppressor right now. I've actually got, it makes a great little swim bait rod too. But right now this, coupled with another Lose Custom Pro. And I've got my canine high-vis pink backing on there, boys and girls. I'm telling you what, I know you can make fun of me if you want to for having pink line, but let me tell you, you'll see this better than you see that yellow line, and I love it. Again, K9 Pro 100 on this, and I'm gonna show you the Ned rigs that I like the most. These are my go-to, man, every year in and out proven. Number one, Angler Tungsten. These are kind of like the mushroom heads. These are the Angler Tungsten heads. My go-to size tend to be the one quarter, but they make smaller ones, one eighths and one sixes. I like those too, and I go to those when I'm fishing really shallow. But you really have to learn what the bass want, okay? For whatever reason, when I'm fishing for those smallmouth, when they get up on the bed and they get committed, sometimes they're gonna want the regular standard rig, Ned rig. One of my favorites, the Sakushi bug in the green pumpkin orange, okay? Green pumpkin works very well. Green pumpkin orange tends to work just a little bit better, but this looks a lot like say a crawdad with the claws cut off. So they're, they're a little more tendency to not peck at those claws and just pick it up. And that way with a good long shank, you're gonna be able to get that bass to bite. Now I like the yellow heads too, because the bass tend to focus on that bright color. So when they come up to get it, they come up to get it from the bottom, which means a better hookup ratio. This is one of my favorite colors. This is what, this is green pumpkin blue. The Ned Dojo worm, good fat worm, really gets those bass's attention. They don't like that bigger bait being in their beds at all. Green pumpkin, of course from third eye, but also this color right here 
from Z-Man, as I lovingly refer to it, the stinky pinky or the bubblegum worm. Listen, when it's dirty, this is what you want. Trust me, ask my buddy Joey from South Carolina. He's seen me light them up on it when we got into some dirtier water. And trust me, use this Sartreuse angler tungsten head and i'm telling you you couple it with that and you are going to light them up in that dirty water something that i really enjoy doing and a buddy of mine chris mr fleming showed me this a couple years ago but i love to take this is the third eye dojo worm again a little thicker a little more girthy worm got some great action to it love that bubble tail good great on a drop shot too they're neutral buoyancy so that means when it sets it's not going to sink float up it's not going to sink down it's going to sit there perfectly straight in the water based on the size hook you put on it now you gotta pay attention to that i own probably and i have gone through probably every flick shake or weighted wacky worm hook that i can find and i'm telling you right now for whatever reason, none of them are as good as this right here. I don't know why I get better hookups on it. I seem to land the fish better. I know it don't look great, but the circle hook, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just the thinner diameter here or if they come right down and get this whole thing. But this, just this, drug through because number one, it's got a lot of action. I mean, you can see the action just from me holding it here. It's got a lot of action, and this kind of drug down through their bed has got me so many bites. And a color that I hope I can maybe talk my guys at Third Eye into making for me is the Bold, bold Bluegill. A Bold Bluegill seems like they hate that color. Now, this is from Bass Munitions, but it seems like they really and truly hate that color, especially when there's a little bit of color in the water. That green pumpkin green pumpkin blue from uh third eye which is my favorite and the uh morning dawn seem to work well wackied for whatever reason and you just kind of got to let the bass tell you which color is going to shine that day that is my april best baits roundup my top five guys get out there try them out because april is a very fast moving month stay on top of them have each and every one of these rods out from start to finish because you never know where you're going to run into the bass and what they're going to be doing. They'll be coming up in different, you know, flights. You'll get a wave come in early. You'll get a wave come in late and a lot of times something in the middle. Get out there in April. In my opinion, it's one of my favorite months to go fishing. And like I said, it's my birthday. So I love to get out and catch big bass on my birthday all right as always questions and comments in the comment section below you guys know i love to talk about fishing with you like it if you like it don't forget to subscribe and as always ring that bell so you get the notifications when these videos come out and as always you guys rock i've been doing this for so long and i still can't get it right but you guys you guys do rock sorry about the delay on getting a winner picked for this underspin mystery tackle box pro everyone but let's go ahead and pick a winner right now all right get that url copied in oh yeah i forgot to filter the duplicates include the, the uh, replies to comments now let's get it and see what we got all right, 154 unique comments. Let's scroll down and see who actually won. Smoky Mountain Fishing, way to go, brother. Hashtag 10,000 fish, way to go. You got it, another great video, Hank. I just pick up, picked up some different underspins to try here in East Tennessee. So another East Tennessee gentleman. Of course, I call myself East Tennessee, Southwest Virginia. So uh, anybody that knows the Tri-Cities area is what we call it. But uh, 
All right, man, you won. I will reach out and leave a comment telling you you won after the video. Well, once this video is up and uh, just send me an email and we'll verify that you are you and we'll get this box mailed out to you. Thank you guys. And as always, you guys rock.